Today on Trimaker, I've got a really exciting topic. We're going to learn how to make lithophanes with our 3D printer. I'm going to take you through all the steps and settings you need to know to get great results. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is convert our JPEG, our photo image, to a 3D STL. All right, so we're going to go to this website right here, 3dp.rocks slash lithophane. The first thing we want to do is go ahead and select our file and upload it. We want to be sure that the image is all nice and cropped and that we have a nice exposure on it as well. Okay, next we'll be go to the model. Now we have a couple different options here for what the look of the model is. Uh, we can do flat, this would be sort of if you're doing the cubes or you just wanna sort of create a 3D photo image. We have an inner curve which sort of arcs forward and you need to put the light on the back side here. You have the outer curve which works uh, just the opposite. It sort of arcs around the light, which I actually really love. I do a, many of these outer curves and these solid cylinders. These are my two favorites. There's a couple other options here, which you, know, you can experiment as you wish. All right, so our photo's in here, but we need to do a couple of modifications to this. For one, there's no border here, and I can actually see this is as actually a negative of our image, and we wanna fix that. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna pick outer curve. We're gonna make one of my little night lights. So we'll go to this, hit refresh. All right, and there it is, and you can see the image. We'll go to settings now. Now we're gonna adjust the model settings for our lithophane panel. And to start off here, we have this maximum size. This is the width of our panel, regardless of whether we have a border or not. So we have 100 millimeters here for the inside dimension. And if you have an arc or a curve, you will be measuring that measurement along the arc. Just keep that in mind. Now, as for thickness and thinnest layer, these two actually work together. The thickness is basically the dark or black portion of our photo, and the thinnest layer is the white or light portion of our panel. And you'll notice over here, for the thinnest layer is 0.8 millimeters. With a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, that is basically two lines of filament will create that sort of light space. And then we have three millimeters for our dark space. I find this contrast works out really well for most lights. Now, if you have a very bright light, you may want to bump this up to 1.2 or 1.6. And then to keep the contrast similar, just go ahead and add that measurement over here. And that should still keep you with a really nice contrast. You can adjust this and toy with it. If you want the, the dark space a little darker, you would just thicken this up. Okay, now we have the border. That just puts a nice little frame around the, the image. And I actually like, you know, three to five millimeters, but we'll do, uh, I'll just do five here. Vectors per pixel, this is basically uh, basically how many vectors are in that each contour of the 3D print, and four is actually really great. I've, I've experimented with this, and this is perfect. The curve, if you're doing a flat image and you just want a little arc, or you can take this all the way to a you know, half circle, you can take this all the way to a circle, but this is a predetermined with the curve because we're doing that outer curve. All right, and then we'll go here to image settings. All right, and you'll see right here that we're at negative. We want to put this to positive. We want a positive image. All right, this is the number one mistake made with people with lithophanes. I see them all the time on the forums where they're showing an image and it's actually the reverse of the, what it should be. So go ahead and fix that. This is basically if you want to mirror the image, you want to flip the image, you don't really need to adjust these. You should do all this in your photo editing software. Get the image ready to go before you get to here. All right, and then we have download settings and we're going to stick to binary STL and manual. And cache settings, don't even worry about this. Okay, so we're all done. Now let's go back to the model and we're gonna hit refresh because you notice that border hasn't occurred. And if you download it now, you're actually gonna, all your settings are gonna be um, not taken into account. So we wanna go ahead and refresh here. And now we have a perfect STL ready to go. You'll notice we have a nice little border around it. Uh, we can see that the arms are now thin. They're going to be bright and we have a good contrast here. So this is all set. You just go ahead and hit download and we're ready to go. I just wanted to jump in here a moment and thank you for watching this video. I really do hope that you're getting some value out of it. If you are, do me a favor, scroll down just a little bit, hit that like and subscribe. That's what keeps me super motivated to produce this content for you. But let's continue on. We've imported our STL into our slicer and we wanna just change the orientation here either to sideways to 90 degrees like this or maybe just slightly canted, which is what we're gonna do here. Uh, this will help the print from waggling back and forth and potentially creating layer lines as we get up higher on the print. Okay, now I have a, a profile predetermined for lithophanes here, and I'm just gonna go through my basic settings here. 
Let's talk a little about the re layer height or the resolution of our lithophane. Now, I actually do most of my lithophanes in this 0.16 uh, millimeter uh, format. I find that that is a nice balance between speed and performance of how it looks. You can go to 0.12. It'll actually just look a little bit better. Or if you want to speed it up a little, I actually find that even at 0.2, my lithophanes actually look pretty decent. Okay, now our initial layer height, this is important. We want to put this at 0.2 or 0.24, possibly 0.28. Um, because this is going to be the base that's going to keep this lithophane from rotating. Now, on an arc like this one with this outer curve, it's not as important, but if you were doing just a flat lithophane, it may get sort of a waggling effect uh, while printing, and you're going to notice little lines and little defects. So a little bit thicker here on the initial layer height will, will benefit. All right, and you're going to go pretty much your standard settings that you get good results with um, with your PLA. And we're going to go down here. Now, this is an important one. We get to bottom thickness. It is important that what we're printing here is solid. We do not want an infill in this. We don't want to have little air pockets because the lithophane is based on the principle that the more plastic, that's creating the contrast. So a little bit of plastic is going to make, create white space. Thick plastic is going to create a black space. If we have a lot of infill inside there, you'll actually see the infill through the lithophane. So we want to just go ahead and I just put 9,999. And then basically this will end up printing it solid. I do think that... Outer walls before inner walls will give a little nicer and cleaner image, especially on the back side of the print and along the edges here. So I go ahead and just do those first. And again, you can experiment with these. I fill gaps everywhere. Again, we're, we don't want that empty space inside the lithophane that will create sort of a light spot. I do my Z seam alignment at one of the sharpest corners. That'll just sort of put it on one of the edges here. I do use ironing for my lithophanes because I just like to have this nice clean look on the top here. I will go ahead and link a video to my, a whole video I did on ironing if you haven't watched that already. It's really great and it'll get you some really nice smooth top layers. All right, infill density, go ahead and just throw this at 100%. Do something simple like triangles. Again, we're trying to create this solid piece of plastic. We don't want air pockets inside. And these settings are just basically what I use on my printer. I go ahead and print these. I'm using Hatchbox or Sunlu filament, and 210 works great. 60 build plate. All right. Now, as for print speed, you can go 50, 60. You can actually print these relatively quickly, but the way this bed is going to be moving back and forth, you may start getting little lines here. I find that 40 gives me an absolute perfect result, so that's usually what I stick to. On Once in a while, I'll go up to 50. Initial layer speed, I do 30. I want to get a nice bed adhesion. All right, definitely keep the jerk on. You don't want this thing waggling back and forth with a lot of speed and motion. It's retraction. All right, now all this is pretty standard here. I do use a fan. I have that kick on at the third layer. For build plate adhesion, I always go with a brim, usually 10 to 15 millimeters. Give a nice stable platform for this. We don't want this thing waggling around. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Go ahead and hit your slice. Now that the slicing is all done, you'll see that we got about six and a half hours of print time, 29 grams of filament. Let's go ahead and save to removable and let's go ahead and print this. Well, it looks like that is pretty much gonna wrap up this video on how to make lithophanes. If you have any questions on these or any other 3D printing topic, do me a favor, just leave a comment down below. I will try to get back to you within about 24 hours. If you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe. You know, that totally blows my mind. It gets me super excited to produce this content for you. But until that next video, I'm out.